welcome to a VRTK tutorial video. In this video, we're going to change the design of the curved pointer and provide a different style. We're going to turn it into having this animated line and a nicer cursor destination. Please consider becoming a VRTK patron. There are plenty of membership levels to sign up at and it really helps to fund these videos. Thanks to all the existing patrons and those patrons who are at the relevant level for a video shout out, you'll see your name scroll up on the screen. Thanks for your support. To start with, we'll go to our curved pointer game object, and then we need to change some of the pointer elements to style it accordingly. If we expand this, we can then see there are some child game objects and one is called pointer elements. If we click on this and expand it, we can see there are three pointer element types. There's the origin, which is the game object used to determine where the pointer starts from. The repeated segment, which is the repeated game object for each segment of the pointer. So that would be the line from start to destination. And then there's the destination, which is the pointer cursor. So for this example, we're only going to be changing our repeated segment and our destination. We can leave the origin alone. So if we go to repeated segment, we can see this has two settings, the valid container and the invalid container. The valid container is when the pointer is touching something valid. So it's in its green state by default. And when it's touching something invalid, it goes to the invalid settings, which is its red state by default. We can see the two things that it needs. It needs to know the container for those game objects that determine the graphics for the repeated segment. And it also needs to know the mesh container. We can just click on these and it will take us straight through into the element that's got this information. So we can see here valid container. And if we click on valid cube, we can see that takes us through to valid cube on elements cube. So elements cube is what gives us that solid line and we're going to replace it with an animated line and the object pointers prefab comes with one that we can use by default. So with elements cube selected, if we just selected the prefab up here, elements cube, that will take us down in the project view. It will take us down to the object pointers prefab package. And we can see here, this is Elements Cube, which is already being used. And there's another one called Elements Animated Cube. So we can grab this, drag and drop it into our repeated segment. And we can see it's down here now. And if we expand this, we can see we've got a valid container and an invalid container. And within there, we've got a valid animated pointer tracer and an invalid animated pointer tracer. We no longer need Elements Cube, so we can select that and we can either delete it or just turn it off. And then if we go back to repeated segment, we can just change these accordingly. So for the valid element container, we're going to use the valid container inside the animated cube. So grab, drag and drop. And then for the valid mesh container, we're going to use the valid animated pointer tracer. So again, grab, drag and drop. And we'll do the same for the invalid elements as well. Just taking them out of the invalid container of the animated cube. So invalid container, grab, drag and drop and invalid animated pointer tracer, grab, drag and drop. And there we go, we've now set up this to have an animated line. We can close that down now. And then again, if we go to destination, we can see this has a valid container and inside there a valid cylinder. And this cylinder is just a simple cylinder mesh. So we're going to replace this with some custom meshes. In this project, there is a global resources folder and in there we have a models folder. You can use whatever models you like for this, but if you want to use the ones from this project, then feel free. So inside models, we have hollow cylinder and tube. So if we go up to our destination, unvalid cylinder, I'm just going to grab hollow cylinder and tube, and I'm gonna drag them in and make them a child of valid cylinder. And we can see that they've appeared there. So for tube, I'm just gonna set this to 90, and then I'll set the scale to 0 0.5, 0 0.51, and we can leave the position as is. And then hollow cylinder is gonna be a glow that extends up from that cylinder. So with hollow cylinder selected, again, I'm just gonna set its rotation to 90, and we'll set its scale to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 100, and we'll set its Y position to 100 as well. Now, if we look inside our materials directory in global resources, We'll see one called Fade Glow Green. We can use that for our hollow cylinder. So if we just grab and drag that into there, and then for our tube, if we just use the green 
material again you can apply whatever materials you wish and then the last thing we need to do is on our valid cylinder let's just turn off the default mesh renderer because we don't want the default cylinder and we could go and do the same for the invalid container if we wanted but as you can see you just need to recreate those and move them in or you could do a different style if you so wished so let's run the scene and see what that looks like so now when i activate the pointer you can see we get this animated line coming out for the repeated segment and it's going down to a nicer destination cursor and that will work just the same way as the other pointer and if i was to go to the invalid state we can see we get the animated line again but we're still getting the original cursor because i never updated that you can also apply this design logic to the straight pointer if you require i hope this has been useful for you if it has please consider subscribing to the channel Leave any likes, dislikes, comments down below. And also please consider becoming a VITK patron as your support really helps fund these videos. Thanks for watching and bye for now.